here we are at a Woolpack fishery. Um, it's in middle of, middle of coming towards the end of March. It's been a really cold night, and me, Jim, and Richie Turner are down here fishing, trying to catch one of these big scaly ones out here. When we uh, got down here, we'd seen a couple of tench roll and um, a possible carp. We set up with good intentions. We've had a few liners, and there's no, only you a have. couple. There's you a, have. I've had a few liners, <laughs> and there's only a few few hours left. But the main reason we wanted to come down here was to talk about the bait. Talk about the bait that we've been using, the way we've been using it, and the way it's going. Um, everyone's out there lately has been hearing about the Nutcracker. The Nutcracker is the main bait um, what we're selling at Urban Baits. But it ain't by, it's not by far our main bait. We've got three baits at Urban Baits. Uh, we've got the tuna garlic, we've got the red spicy fish, and we've got the Nutcracker. And if I say it in that order, um, the reason I'm going to say it in that order is because firstly, my favourite bait of the three over the years, or my most successful bait, has been the tuna garlic. The tuna garlic is what started off urban baits in a sense. Um, urban baits can be traced right back, um, I say, until for the first boilie I ever made when I was probably 12, 11, 12 years of age, which would have been made out of ground rice and a few ingredients that you get out of your cupboard in your mum's house and some vanilla. And that's how we first how made our first. How many years ago was that? That was over 30 years ago. That was about, I'm 43 free now. I was probably 11, 11 or 12 when I weighed my first, what we called the specials back then. We called them specials. Right. And they used to disintegrate. I'd cast them out and I'd be sitting there for fishing for an hour and we'd really in and it'd be gone. Yeah. It'd be gone. And then we'd cast it out again. And you know, I never had a run all year using them baits but that's how it's built up from then I started learning lots of bits and pieces and I've used bait along a similar line all the way through from then you know it's meant the same thing to me and I've, I've learned how to use it the tuna garlic was a brilliant bait and not many baits I can say where um, I'd had the sort of success on it that I did well, I'm, um, yet to, I'm yet to play with and that Jim's yet to use that and, and that's what excites me yeah. because I know that when Jim gets on a proper water where that, they do like that that's that's but gonna work for at him. the end of the day when I um, left where I was before for whatever reasons right yeah which are mine um, and by the morning I had four offers and um, I've known Terry oh, since the early Ragebury days when I was there not when the new ones were put in there and all that when Mary and Mary's mate Pugs, Pug Malins and all the rest of it were there and we've been like friends mates ever since you know what I mean I remember when he walked into my swim the first time I ever met you and you said to me I smell a carp and I just put Malins back less than eight minutes before and since that day you know we've always gotten all right and and when I got an offer from you which I was like stunned about right yeah um, no disrespect to any of the other offers right yeah to work with this man um, and have and be involved with bait recipes that have been like trawling carp for, well, I I said quarter of a century, 25 years. Yeah. It, to me, it was, you know, a natural progression where I wanted to be and to be involved in furthering that, um, your ideas and that, mm. and putting my ideas, because it seems once my ideas get put into place, I have to move on. And we've decided um, this is a long-term project here, right, yeah. I've got no plans to go anywhere else, I've sort of, what I call found home now. So, with his brains and my brains, we've both caught massive carp from all around this country, right? Yeah, it was it was a no-brainer me to go to Urban Baits, and I uh, thank you for the offer. Yeah, Jim. Of <laughs> course, we're uh, we're grateful to you to use our bait. I was excited because when you've used a, a good bait and and you know your stuff, you know how to find a fish, you know how to catch a fish. Then the bait becomes an edge, another edge that you've got. And when all them edges are put together, then you know, you'll see some spectacular catches, as I have done over the years on using these baits from when I first, you know. I always talk about the term the going bait. A lot of people misunderstand me. I think sometimes it feels it sounds a bit arrogant in a sense. But to me, the going bait takes me back a long way. When I was about 13 or 14 years of age, I was using five or six different baits. 
Now, the reason that I was doing this was because in them times, I never had anyone to point me. There wasn't no DVDs or nothing like that to say, tell, go and use squid and octopus, or tell, go and use tutti fruit, fruity boilies. I didn't have that option. So what I used to do, I used to make about four or five different boilies, like actually make four or five, I'd make a fish meal, I'd make a milk protein, I'd make one with bone meal in it, you know, I'd read all the recipes that I could get, I added all the bits and pieces I used together, and then what I used to do is to go to the lake and I'd fish all them baits. I'd have three different rods, because I didn't know what one would work, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, I would hit the going bait, I'd hit it on the nail, I'd just go crack, and, my, and one of the baits would slip in with the lake. Yeah. Um, when it connects, when it clicks, that's when you get the big results. And that is what I mean by the term the game bait. And that's why some people say to me, out of the three baits we sell, what is the best bait? And it's, I can't distinguish. The, the Nutcracker is the best seller. And I, the other two, I call them like my secret I would say assassins. The nut, yeah, I would say the Nutcracker though, is it's a lot better in sort of colder water temperatures. Yeah, yeah. To, not, to me, yeah, you it, know, like I don't want to be using the fish meal really. Mm. But I know you do at times, and you mix them and stuff like yeah. that. These are all things I'm yet to find out. But remember, yeah. years and years ago, Terry, right? Yeah, even I made my own baits. I haven't got time to do all of that now because it'd take a big chunk yeah. of my fishing time, which I haven't got loads of time because of like my tuition business um, and stuff like that. So I don't want to be spending days and days, especially at home with the missus, rolling bait. Rolling bait, no. S stinking the house out. <laughs> From the premier days. Um, from the premier days, the, oil, the fish mills we used then, going back, this going back 25 years, were the, the oil would solidify in the bait. The, the baits were very high in oil, mm. and the oil used to solidify. That was one of the reasons we used to say, don't use the fish mill in the winter, and then we just cut it with a protein. Yeah. But see the tuna and garlic and the red spicy fish, some of my best catches in cold water have been using them baits. And one of my good friends last year, he was catching them under the ice from a hard water using that tuna and garlic. Well, but I'm here to learn, mate. Yeah, no, you're the definitely, master. definitely. You're the master. But all three baits, but this is what I say. When you get to a lake, why not play around and then see what one hits? This is what I'm doing today. This is my first trip to this lake. Um, I've got a mixed jar. I've brought two different baits with me. I've got the red spicy fish and I've got the um, nutcracker. I've mixed the two together, not totally. I've put about 10... 10 parts nutcracker to two parts red, red fish. Yeah. Mix them up and I'm playing around with different hook baits over the top. I'm gonna see which one they prefer. Once I start fishing, I know they'll eat them both. There's no doubt in my mind that them nut baits won't get eaten. Um, but there might be one they prefer. And once I hit that note, that is it, I'll follow through. And then so, that's the going bait. Yeah, yeah, I, I understand that. I understand what you're on about, so. But with me, it's like, I just, I like something at a certain time in the year. It's like later course, on, I course. will turn more on to them. Of course. But, you know, I understand with the short totally. results, I've been with you, like, what's it, four months now? Yeah. And, you know, I've had 80 odd carp yeah. from five different waters, um, and it's all on that nutcracker, nutcracker, mate. And it's, you know, I always look at it, if it's working, why break it, you know? Do you mind? And if it carries on, yep. and if it carries on, I'll. I won't change it, you no, know. No, of course it's just, not. But that's, I might fish a different hook bait. You've got the going bait, haven't you? Yeah. You've got the going bait, so why change? Confidence breeds success. Of course it does. Anything, doesn't it? Someone come to me yesterday, he went, Terry, he said, I'm catching on the nutcracker, he said, but I'm ready to use the red spicy fish. I said, don't. don't you've change. you've yeah. hit the note, you've hit the going bait, yeah. you stick with it, and that's yeah. and that's how you'll catch it. But sometimes, if you've been on it for a while by changing a different hook course, bait, you know, a colour, course. a flavour, a totally different bait as well. But you've got to bash them hard though before it gets to that point. <laughs> yeah. ain't you? You've got to bash it. Yeah. You know, last year. Well, I people didn't... like me and you, when we do it, we do bash carp, yeah. as you yeah, put it. Yeah. You know, it's, I call rhythm. it trawling. Trawling, that's you right. You know what I mean? And that's where it, like people get a bit funny about it because it's like you come on, but with um, the hunting skills you've got, because I know you're very good at watercraft location. You don't worry about that, you don't worry about your bait, you don't worry about your rigs right yet, so you've got a complete package and all you want to do is go in yeah. and catch Mr. Carl. Same as me. I'm waiting for him I'm to not turn. sitting here camping and mm. I'm here for two mm. or three years. Mm. I need to get on and move on to the next yeah. project. I mean, one o'clock in the morning, I heard a fish roll out here, I was out my bag. I've got to be careful, right, yeah, because he was saying, like, it was one roll near me to my left and he's like, 
and I've got a rod over that way. It's like, well, well, mate, you know, I've got a rod there. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I just said I'd be moving it about one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> the rods will be over me. Of but, you know, that's well, these fish. This is the first time I've fished in Cambridge since the 80s. I used to come down here like late 86, 87, 88, when I was 16 years of age, I used to get a lift down to sort of these sort of parts. Um, I found a lake called the Royston in them days, the Paxton, I wrote about it in the book, uh, The Urban Myth, and you know, when I found them lakes, they were such cracking, well, to, compared to what I've been used to, fishing all the East London Park lakes and stuff, they were cracking waters, and the fish were scaly as anything. Dark fish, heavily scaled, every one of them totally different. Absolute beauties, big, beautiful, oh, they're lovely carp. And what I've seen so far, Jim showing me some of the pictures in here, this is a top fishery. And um, these sort of fish. Scaly baits, oh, mate, proper carp. You know, and, and some of them, they're, they're big fish as well, 30 plus, which yeah. are a massive fish in my eyes for these scaly 30 type odd fish. years old. Yeah, 30 years old. Well, you've got to remember, we've got something in common here as well. I know this is off the beaten track a bit, but mm. you you produced your own book and I produced my own yep, book. That's and there right. ain't many people, yeah, mate. No, no. I don't care what people say, mm. you've actually had that sort of achievement. Yeah, I see, all from start to finish. You know, and I remember yeah, totally. talking to you when you were doing yours and mm. all the rest of it, and then yeah. I've done mine, and mm. you think, like, what's that, a year and a half? and we both brought out our own books, yep. distributing them ourselves, yep. blah, 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 you yep. know, and success is and there. nearly sold out, <laughs> nearly sold out. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one, isn't it? Well, let's hope we both catch a big scaly carp in Norway. Yeah, I'm sure we will at some point, mate, you know. Yeah. Look at it now, I'll keep looking. Yeah. If not, it's next trip, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's gone northerly now. It was a better day yesterday afternoon, but, you know, they were about in the night. It's one of them things, isn't it? Mm. So sooner rather than later, right, yeah. They'll be getting with, on the nutcracker. The, well, yeah, but with <laughs> the weather as it is, um, you look at a month from now, right, we'll be looking to third week of April, right, yeah? yeah. It'll be carnage everywhere, yeah, course, won't it? Wherever course, you go. it's going to wake up. Mr. Carp's just waking up, isn't uh, it? Last year I had a, a brilliant spring um, using these baits and putting plenty in as well. I never, as Jim C yesterday with me, I'm not frightened to put bait out and sometimes you know, sometimes I feel as if I might have overbaited, but I always feel that in the long term, that's yeah. going to catch me a lot of fish, you know. Yeah, but I notice with you, right, yeah, you're using different size baits, you're spreading them around. Mm. One thing you do the same as me, I didn't do it this trip because you mm. were doing it, right? I didn't mm. want to put, because I'm to your left, I don't yeah. want to put bait out as mm. well. Yeah. So I'm fishing sort of around you with yeah. similar baits, right, yeah? Yeah, yeah. And just done tra trouser bait, but mm. baiting up little and often is yeah. a massive edge. Yeah. Match anglers do it all the time, little and often, little and do you often. Know, I was saying to Jim, like phoning them up, really. You know, phoning making it, he's phoning them up, isn't it? You know, I mean, one lake I fished, this is this is one of the best, one of the best days fishing I had over there, was in conjunction with this, even though I lost a very big fish that day. And what I was doing, I was getting 20 millers and I was pulping them high into the air, long, right onto my spot to make as much eruption as I could. And, um, you know, because it was a big lake, 40 acres, but the fishing there loved my boilies. So, you know, the noise of my bait eating the water was definitely bringing yeah, them along. It's an edge, isn't and, it? and as you say, phoning them up. Yeah, you're wired up totally different to me, you know what I mean? But there you go, we're all different, aren't mm. we? And that's what makes what we are. Mm. You know, two great minds together. I don't care what anyone says, you've had chunks, mm. I've had chunks, I catch loads of fish, you catch loads of fish when you do go these days. Yeah. And there you go, mate. What, a, a, what a marriage. Yeah. And that, that's it. That's, that's it. why I made the decision I did going to Urban Bait. Yeah. And, uh, well happy now. Well I mean, happy. we're developing all our stuff all the time. You know, we're trying to strive to get our bait better all the time, uh, including our hook baits that we've been working on hard. And our, our, our you know, I'm well, in love with Hold on a minute, sorry I'm cutting in there. You talk about um, hook baits, like ready made hook baits. I'm a cork ball person, That's I it. have to have the paste. Yeah. But I don't even do that no, now. I'm no. using because I'm. This is an I've important trawled, factor. Yeah, I've trawled yeah, on, on them. Balls. That's the only me. place, Jim, I've done it. I'm sold as well. I was using cork balls. This time last year I was catching fish on cork balls, left, right and centre. Um, you know, these, these new pop-ups I've got, I have total confidence. First trip out and I caught a fish. You know, this session, I know well, that I'm going to Look how many I've had. All mine, 80 odd, have been on... On those white, white, white ones. They've been washed out I nutcracker. Love the white, yeah. The normal washed out white nutcracker. I've got all three rods out there. I know I'm going to reel them in and I know they're not going to be a... Um, I'll chuck one over, Rich. These yep, are the ones. Flying in. They come from everywhere. These there's, there's there's people standing all around here with tubs. And uh, the ones. that's them. 
yeah. they're the governors. They're washed out, you fish them over the top, get a bit of bait in, put a bit of bait in, keep it trickling in, get the fish searching for it. The thing is with these, ba these baits, you can eat them yourself. The fish ain't gonna get guts ache off them. So <laughs> as they're eating them, they're thinking, cool, that feels nice in my stomach. A bit like that pizza this morning. <laughs> yeah, hey, a bit pizza. like that pizza this morning. And what happens is, once they get that in their stomach, they think that feels nice, they go looking for more. Well, it gives, then if they it's come a good bait, that it gives them a sense of well-being. Of course it does. So it's they come back for a more. A nice sensation in their bellies, you know. Don't get no belly ache like, well, let's not say it. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> these pop-ups here, one of them just sitting above it, in my eyes, the old multi-rig, you like the chod, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. So we're different in what we're doing there, but we know we're both on a winner. There you go. Simple. Get on the urban bait. Yeah, get you on know the, it makes sense. Get on the nutcracker. <laughs>